Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to this, the Friday edition, actually the Good Friday edition. If you are listening to this broadcast on its planned schedule, this is Good Friday Good not because of the awful death of Jesus Christ on Calvary, but good because of the results. We, through him, can be saved from our sin. Amen. That's a good thing for us, but it came at an awful cost. Thanks for joining us today. My Bible is sitting open to the Psalms, Psalm 97 in particular. If you can, take your Bible and turn there, Psalm 97. While many people on this day are, if they are radio speaker, are dealing with the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, and rightly so, we are finding ourselves in a study of Psalm 97, dealing with the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to earth to accomplish the work of Messiah. Isaiah 53 prophesied that he would have to give his life, that we could have salvation, but There's another aspect of Messiah's work, and that is the ruling and reigning of God Almighty on planet Earth in bodily form. That's part of what we're looking at here in Psalm 97. I hope you can stay with us this day. I have a gospel tract in my hand. Since this is Good Friday, I've picked up this particular tract. It's entitled Memorial Stones. I'll say something about it here in just a moment. Let me lead in and hopefully prepare us for our Bible study this way. Have you ever memorized the verses Philippians 2, 10, and 11? Philippians 2, 10, and 11. Now, if you've been saved for about 10 years or so, I'm pretty certain you have memorized the verses, and more likely than not, you memorized it without even trying to. Here is what those two verses say. It says this, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth, of things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You see, you did know those verses. You you may have forgotten some of the phrases in between the fact where the, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, but you know these verses today And as we come to Psalm 97, this Psalm connects with these verses out of Philippians. Today, we need to turn our focus not so much on the return of Christ to rule and reign that will happen someday. We need to focus on how these verses ought to impact us and the reality in our lives this day if we know Christ as Savior. Are you Are you under the lordship and kingship of Jesus Christ? Is Mark Smith living, conducting his life under the lordship of Jesus Christ? Get your Bible, Psalm 97. I mentioned the gospel tract here a moment ago, and friend, a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. This one entitled Memorial Stones begins this way. Daddy, please tell me about these stones. The daddy goes on and answers, well, son, these stones are loving memorials of departed loved ones. They mark the graves of moms and dads, brothers and sisters, grandmothers and grandfathers, neighbors and good friends. Some are in memory of soldiers who died to preserve our freedom. These stones speak of our love and respect for the ones buried here. But they also speak of, and then it goes on to say that death is certain. Death may be sudden. Death comes to the old and the young. We need to be ready. But then it goes on to talk about an empty grave, the grave of the Lord Jesus Christ. He died on the cross to pay for our sins, was buried and rose again. Glory to God. That will be the focus of Sunday's worship at our church. I hope at your church as well. This great track, Memorial Stones, a good gospel tool. Old friend, be ready when at the end of the program, my announcer gives our contact information, give us your name and mailing address, 
We want to send you a free sample packet. If you cannot stay to the end of the program, just go to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. BibleTracksInc.org. And by the way, we've been giving tracks away all over the world in different languages free of charge for 80 years. Would you like to be part of our team? Contact us. Talk about how you can help take the gospel all over the world. Well, Psalm 97, the opening seven verses say this, the Lord reigneth, let the earth rejoice, let the multitude of the isle be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. A fire goeth before him and burneth up his enemies round about. His lightnings enlightened the world. The earth saw and trembled. The hills melted at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness and all the people see him. His glory, confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols. Worship him, all ye gods. We'll stop right there. Now, Psalm 97 is a song originally designed to be sung by God's nation, the nation of the Jews. It was sung first at the celebration of the rebuilding of the second temple. And that story is found over in the books of Ezra and Nehemiah. But this psalm goes way beyond having God present in the holy of holies in the temple. This psalm speaks of when God will rule and reign from Jerusalem's throne. This psalm will be realized at the second coming of Jesus Christ as he establishes his 1,000-year reign on planet Earth. Now, yesterday, I focused on verses 1 and 2, and I used this phrase, the person, the person, the person of God who will rule is described there, frankly described in his present role as ruling from heaven's throne. But now come to verses three and four. We're not talking now about the person, but the power, the power of God is seen here. This is the open power which will be manifest at Jesus's second coming. Verse three talks about the evidence, notice the E word, the evidence of his power. And then verse four shows the extent of his power. The evidence of God's power will be seen in the fire that will come and destroy the enemies of God. This has not happened yet, obviously. But then the extent of God's power is seen in verse four. All the world will see, all the world will tremble. That's exactly what Jesus spoke about. We read on Tuesday's broadcast from Matthew 24, verses 29 and 30. But not only do we see the person who will reign, not only do we see the power of his reign, but number three, we see the presence of God himself there in verse five. God's reign will not be done by some intermediary. It won't be Michael the archangel. It won't be Gabriel, nor will it be done by King David. Verse 5 says God himself will be present. Now, just to be frank and honest with you, there is a debate among good and godly Bible scholars as to whether King David himself will be raised up to share and participate in this ruling. I'll leave the discussion of that to better minds than I, but there is no debate, though, that King Jesus, the God-man, God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, will be personally present to rule. That brings me to number four. My fourth word, beginning with the letter P, is the word purpose. We come to verses six and seven, and we find the purpose What is the purpose for Jesus himself to sit and rule and reign on planet Earth? Well, these two verses, verses 6 and 7, certainly do not give us all that we can learn from Scripture about this, but these two verses do tell us three things, at least. Number one is this, the universal sight, the universal sight. I'm coming back to verse 6. Verse 6 says this, The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. All the people of the earth will see God's glory. 
Now, the Jewish people in the Old Testament were to be a witnessing nation. As they obeyed God's laws and let God lead them, they were to be a tremendous witness to the glory of God. If you want a case study, just go to Joshua chapter 2 and read about Rahab there. She knew about the glory of God. The nation had walked and God's power had been manifest. At the second coming, all peoples of all the earth will know that the Lord, he is God. That the Lord, he is God. Oh, Elijah went up on old Mark Carmel there and had that tug of war with 450 prophets. And he just challenged the people. If Jehovah be God, follow him. If Baal be God, follow him. And when the fire came down, the people shouted, the Lord, he is God. That will be the cry at the second coming of Jesus Christ. Not only is there universal sight in verse six, there is a universal surrender in verse seven. Verse 7 opens this way, confounded or in utter confusion be all they that serve graven images. These followers of false gods and false ideas about God will see beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jehovah is the God. They have been worshiping the wrong God. They had, verse 7 says, boasted themselves in their idols, but at the second coming of Jesus, all their boasting and all their mockery about Jesus will end, end utterly and end forever. The third thing I see is not only a universal sight and universal surrender to King Jesus, but there is a universal service. Verse 7 ends with these five words, worship him comma, all ye gods. Worship him, all ye gods. If your Bible is not open, let me just tell you here that the word gods here, it begins with a small letter G. It refers not to the deity, but to human beings who hold special status. It would include political leaders, military leaders, and even religious leaders. And as we are meeting by radio today, very few political leaders, very few military leaders, and a growing number of religious leaders will not confess that Jesus is Lord, will not bow the knee to King Jesus. Sad, sad. There's a day coming, though, when every person on planet Earth, from large, from person, great or small, will bow the knee and openly confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But as I said at the beginning, our focus today is not the future, but our own hearts today. Jesus has come, if you know Christ as Savior, he's come to indwell our hearts, our physical bodies, to the person of the Spirit of God. Jesus is to be king of our life. We are to crown him now. He's to be king of our worship. He's to be king of our work day, king of our family unit, king in our churches. Tell me, friend, is there some area in your personal life that right now is not submitted to the kingship of Christ? This morning before I came to the office, I had to confront that question in my own heart and life and put my life back on the altar and say, King of my life, I crown thee now. Beloved, if you need to do that, don't delay. Do it right now wherever you're at. Make Christ a new and afresh King of kings and the Lord of lords in your heart and life. And then go tell somebody how they can have Christ as their Savior. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.